Good evening. Welcome to the Grosse Hill Township. Welcome to the Grosse Hill Township Recreation Commission meeting, August 25th, 2011. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome to the, to the CRC meeting, Thursday, August 25, 2011. Um, you know, speaking of which, Tim, we can't even approve the agenda then either. No. All right. So, I guess we can go right to public comment, right? Mm -hmm. Public comment, three minute limit on non agenda items. Anybody want to have a public comment? State your name and address, please. Uh, Kelly Brantley, 9450 Waterman. Um, just want to, I was kind of hoping that uh, Oot might be here. Um, just kind of want to make the Recreation uh, Committee aware that there was a Planning Commission meeting, I think, last week. Uh, the purpose of one of the agenda items was to purchase road ends for some reason or another. Um, I'm guessing it's probably something to do with a kayak launch. Um, of course, I live on one of the road ends, so it's of interest to me. Um, but I also would like to know how certain items of that nature get bypassed and don't come to the Recreation Committee at all for discussion before going to the Planning Commission and then going to the board or it's never even as discussed at the board level to even go to the Planning Commission. Um, and I'd also like to know, has there ever been or will there be a true household-to-household -household survey on how the taxpayers would like to spend their money in order of what they would like to see, i.e. a motorized launch, a non-motorized launch, a volleyball court in the middle of town. I mean, I, you know, just all the recreational activities that we would like to offer, what do they consider a priority? That's all I've got. All right. Well, as far as that last question, that's pretty easy. We went, we go uh, recreation as a five-year master plan, and through the five-year master plan process, we actually invite the public, uh, specific groups that always have their uh, fingers in the recreation pie through uh, Water's Edge, the Centennial Farm, the soccer fields, and such. All the different groups: Herb Society, Boy Scouts, anything in between. Um, that's where we get the input. We also have the general public ones, where we. We must have had how many different inputs um, meetings? We must have had at least a half dozen, right? Yeah, well, they, the planners recommend, and the state requires, like, I think, two to three, two at a minimum. I think we had probably double figures between, like, 11 and 13. It's in here. I have a document. I'd have to look it up real quick. And, but we you know, the specificness of sites to generalization when it came to that. So that input is what goes to this commission to what we have and then we put it in the five-year master plan as far as the priority monies is always the number one thing about what's going to be happening sure. or some group where they get going and they, they want to make it happen that's really how things really seem to take off if we okay. got someone to maybe spearhead something and get some ground swelling support but it's all public input about priorities and stuff like that we don't get any input from other than the public as far as what we want to do okay but that public input is it is it Five percent of the population? Is it ten percent? Is it? I mean, you know, I've lived on the island here now for seven years, and I've never. Yeah, the first a couple. I think I've worked on five of the master plans, and um, the first two we did surveys, and it was like fifteen percent or below okay. on public. In, you know, the surveys we actually sent to their houses. Certainly. So that wasn't very good. And then there's been a theme with the planners over the last three plans that I've done where they like to have those charrettes or public input meetings. Mm -hmm. And they seem to think that gets your best um, response. Um, we sent we um, we identify all the community groups, schools, church groups, nonprofit clubs, and we send a mass mailing to the probably a couple in each of the groups, officers, okay. inviting them to those meetings. And that's how we've done the last two. But we've been uncomfortable because we've always felt that there's people that might miss those. So over the um, 17 months that we did the planning process, mm -hmm. we had uh, an additional public hearing. We had a community input session. I mean, we really... Um, 
and sure. advertise through and camera, it, on okay. cable, through our meetings. You know, if anybody watched us on, on your, through our minutes and stuff like this, you know, we're going to have public input. Public input. But we okay. do do we do put out channels twice a year. Correct, and it's in there. Yeah. And we could also okay. do something on the web page. So that's something we can put yeah. together. That yeah, would be I mean, no problem. I just I just get concerned when when we try to spend taxpayer dollars on on certain items that maybe. Two percent or three percent of the population want, and they may be the two or three percent of the population that are in those committees or in the surveys. But yet, seventy to eighty to ninety percent of the population isn't in that survey. But it's your tax dollars we're spending. Well, so and, and just like for your tax dollars, like our tax dollars that we take from Girls Hill residents is probably one fifth of our budget. Everything else is just user fees and. Everything else is how we get by. What, what two hundred thousand dollars probably? Well, when we first started, we relied heavily on just the millage. We've been on a half mill for twenty, going on twenty five years. How much are you collecting with that? Two hundred. It was. It's gone to two hundred eighty thousand. Our budget's nine hundred thousand. So we try to take the two hundred eighty thousand and spread it around as much we can over all the different age groups, the different desires, wants, and needs. Sure. And then we were very fortunate with the township board taking cell money, like the big cell tower that's all at right. the place gate. They gave us a portion of that, and that really helps the farm. And then we've used some of that money in emergencies to do other rec projects. Well, that's probably been a real key right. to keep us and going. And the volunteers that we have, Rec. I mean, that's the big thing, how we keep Rec going on Girls Eels, volunteers. No, that's that's mm -hmm. great. But then again, so other, other additional recreational activities that um, would be on the island should be money-making ventures, or we just uh, spend the money and offer it up to freedom and we just yeah it varies to different types of program right. you're offering some yeah. you want to make a profit some you want to break even based on the number of people in that age group some years we don't typically make a great deal sure. but with the one thing we need to worry about though as the population switch you know the, the there's going to be a Demographics. lot of baby boomers. People That's where all your, your income and your <laughs> money is in that group. But they're used to getting the discounts and sure. the benefits. So it's real tough from a public servant standpoint how to balance all that. that. Totally agree. And that's, yeah. that's why I get concerned when people start talking about putting things in right. on the island and we're just opening it up to Joe population. I'll tell you what kind of department we've really become over the years. We work very closely with the community groups, whether we're working with Gyro to secure funding mm -hmm. for the the gold posts in the fields in the in the airport park there, Commerce Park area, or going together with soccer on a grant. We have the avenue to apply. They put the match up. We try to use some in-kind services. Okay. That helps. Um, the equestrian club coming in and um, working on the farm and doing improvements. Sure. The foundation comes in and probably raises thirty, forty thousand dollars a year that we don't really. I might be high on the figure now, but originally that fundraiser, the pig rolls, took in thirty or forty thousand. Oh, we yeah. don't ask for a cut of that, but they do support us in other areas with our program. So it's really a, a partnership. How we've evolved with our millage because it Excellent. doesn't go as far as it used to. Yeah, so it's a common. It's it's okay. kind of a it's kind of a mixed bag. Yeah, and that's okay. And that's that's kind of like what I'm trying to understand is you know. We know that the rec department doesn't make a lot of money, which is fine. And the, the citizens of the community are more than willing to spend money yes, to are. do these type of things, and, and that's okay. Um, we just want to know, you know, if we're going to fund projects, you know, are there grants and things like that that we can get where it's all free? And yeah, that's the only way we can exist. The, the ones that are successful, not to interrupt, are usually community driven, like yeah. the Gyra Project, mm -hmm. the Foundation, the Golf Committee. That's kind of what we've done. We started working on those projects. But if it's a grassroots from the community, mm -hmm. that works the best. Right. And the ones that come from one person off the cuff sometimes struggle, but if it's a great idea, it catches fire and then we go with it. But usually it's a community group that we work with, and that's where yeah. most of our projects come okay. from now. Billy, you want to say something? Yeah, I don't think my mic's working. Hello? That's okay. I can, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you mentioned, did you mention that you were at the Planning Commission meeting or you just heard? I watched it. Okay, you watched it. Yes. What was the, the ultimate goal of discussing this road end thing? Well, what was what was their plan? <laughs> well, the, it, and, and, and to paraphrase, because I don't want to, you know, it's a lengthy meeting and you should probably watch it. Um, the idea was to, or at least one of the options, um, was to purchase road ends that connected to water. Now, why you would only purchase the road ends that connected to water may be for one reason or another, or you see value in just those pieces of property. Um, well, I would say public access. I would say the main thing, probably. Right? I would right. say but public if, access. But if is we a have public access already, why would we purchase those pieces of property? 
and it becomes the road ends. I have no idea. We right. were not in the loop on that. So uh, I guess the first question would be is, is it really public access before we even went to the Planning Commission to discuss about purchasing? You know, what is the regulations and rules of purchasing? I'm just assuming. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's why I'm kind of confused mm -hmm. myself. So. Well, we were, uh, I've been on this commission for a while, and we were approached uh, quite a while back, I can't remember if it's more Lemoyne. than years. By Lemoyne. By Lemoyne about mm -hmm. road ends. He was on the planning commission. Yes, yes. And yeah. we had a general discussion, and part of the general discussion included if you're going to use a road end, where do you park? What are you going to do? How is it policed? Clean Who's going to clean it? Mm -hmm. And those kinds of things. And, so, no. and that kind of squashed the idea of having road ends for whatever purpose. And one of the things that I mentioned is that I belong to Sacred Heart Church. Mm -hmm. And as you know, at the end of church, there's the chapel. We used to allow public fishing there. The reason we don't anymore is because the abusers were leaving their trash and their dead right. fish and all the stuff that they didn't want. Right. And we had to clean it up. And so that's why we posted no fishing. Mm -hmm. And that's my point to our community and to the general public is that I think that's a disaster. If if that's their intention, to either fish or launch boats or whatever they're going to do, uh, parking, I certainly would. If I were living where you're living, I don't want people parking in my driveway right. or across the front of my house. But the point is, who's going to police it and who's going to keep it clean? Well, like I, well, we like I said, my, my, my original was concern was, um, you know, and the, the road ends are public and, and anybody's more than willing to use them and that's fine and dandy. Um, I don't pertain to, to own the, the road end. I own my piece of property and that's what I own. That's what I pay taxes on. Um, but my concern, I guess, is, is more in the process. I guess I'm not really understanding the process of how do things normally go to the board for discussion to where the board says, yeah, I think this warrants further discussion. Let's send it to a committee. Or is it just I'm sitting at home and I say, hey, you know what? Well, I'm Build a replica of the Eiffel Tower. I, I, wish, I wish Uta was here because I can't speak for right. the right. whole so anything. You know, you um, how it works in that end, I'm not even go down that yeah. road. Okay, and that's fine. Like I said, that was that was one of my mm -hmm. my questions. I was hoping to get answered. I'll help me guess send her an email. One thing that's come up over the years is a boat launch, and. Um, there's been several committees, and the original commission, Otis Conway and Dick Weiss, did an extensive study on sites, and then when they got closer to identifying one, it was an explosion. So each time we went through the master hand process, we felt the need, because there's quite a few residents, I don't know if it's a majority or not a majority, you know, once again, it's hard to tell. Right. We felt that because there was a, um, a pretty good sizable amount of people wanting that, we put it under the long term. We didn't want to take it off. We felt it was our responsibility. So it does take careful planning and everybody getting together. Uh, like I said, usually if it's a group of people or a community group, those projects go, I've noticed in my almost 25 years, they work better that way. Definitely because there's more transparency. There's more transparency. transparency. Right. So that, that's it. And some road endings would be possible, but there's got to be all kinds of uh, area for support facilities and most of the road endings wouldn't have that as you get more and more use so that's a tough one to call yeah and, and don't get me wrong i mean you know i i know that the, that the master plan has is a and more of a boat, kayak. Oh, boat launch and, and that doesn't bother me I, the kayak launch doesn't bother yeah we've me. never really known you where know, to go with it but we felt some quite a few residents wanted one right. but we didn't want to go through this the, the grief until we all started working together on it and it's hard to come to that point. Right. It just it just kinda like I said, it concerns me a little bit that I don't really understand the process. You know, I don't understand how we go from here to here to here and then the next thing you know we're voting on it and spending money. And I, I don't well, even I don't if it comes up that. at a meeting it doesn't mean it's necessarily the planning commission's ideal or the rec commission because yeah. that those yeah. projects and, will come and, out of and, and don't and don't you know don't don't get my question is is out of line. I mean I understand Stephen Wynn's question it was perfectly a good question. I just don't know how I got from a question of public use to three options on the table of purchasing property. So that I'm a little like I said, I'm, I'm just well, that's, 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 that's what happened yeah. at the past kayak launch. We had no yeah. input on that one either. Right. But, you know, and again, that one was no, well, made to my backyard. So the reason I asked sir. you, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead, sir. The reason I asked you the question was because if there was some discussion in the selling of that property to use for 
non-motorized or motorized boat launches, I would be very concerned because we, at our uh, June 23rd meeting, I made a motion at the request of, of the township board that the CRC enter into uh, the investigatory part of where would a better launch be. Mm -hmm. And so we are, are, it is our duty and job to get the information back to the township board as to what we feel is the recommendation that this board would make to them regarding non-motorized boat launch. So, uh, and it's in, it was in our meeting minutes, sure. and okay. I just wanted to mention that to you. Nope. That's why I asked the question, if they were talking about having boats launched there, and I, I think that's, that's, well, I, something's I, wrong. Like I said, it just concerns me that, you know, the left hand and the right hand yeah. may not be on the same page. Yeah. Um, so, Hello, that's that. Yes, definitely. You said you watched the Planning Commission? Yeah, you, yes, ma'am. I did, too, and I have to agree with you. I'm not sure what it was all, how they were coming, but uh, one of the, uh, when they were talking, the one agreement, they were going to present it to the township board as yes. to which one of the three they were going to take. Right. As to purchasing, I didn't understand that they were purchasing it because the ones they were talking about belonged to Wayne County. And there are 17 of those, if they're, I understood it correctly. You, the, 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 and it, as far as I could figure from the meeting, that's where it stands right now. Yeah, I believe there's there's a subcommittee that Mr. Lemoyne, I believe, go, Mr. Yes. Frucci is, is chairing the subcommittee. Yeah. They're supposed to go back and investigate. Right. Again, I don't I don't want to try to quote too much for the meeting because then it's just <laughs> what I say and then not what's actually on record. Yeah. But um, I, I was just concerned that, that we're going after or the potential of going after rodents from Wayne County or petitioning Wayne County to purchase rodents from them mm -hmm. for some purpose that I don't you can't build a house on it so we can't get any revenue from it so right. I don't I guess I just I guess I don't understand the process I do understand the question is it public use or not but I don't understand the pro or the potential of purchasing the properties that the city would own for whatever potential use they may. I would definitely recommend those questions so, to the board. Okay. I mean, if someone's going to answer something, it's them. But I okay. appreciate your nope. time. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? Not agenda items? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Going back. Approval <laughs> of the agenda. Any, any additions, deletions, corrections? Otherwise, motion to approve, please. A motion approved. Alpha, need a second, please? Second. That was John. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approval of the minutes of the public hearing of June 23rd, 2011. Any additions, deletions, or changes? Otherwise, a motion to approve, please. I'll move that the uh, minutes of the meeting of June 23rd be approved as written. Bill, second, please. Second. John. And you got to be quicker. <laughs> is it, is it, is it, oh, I could too. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All, those in, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion passes. All right, chairperson's report. Update on the Water's Edge restaurant lease and the Equestrian Center operating agreement. Okay, Water's Edge restaurant, Sharky's restaurant, they've been with us for five years. Um, the Equestrian Center, seven years plus probably. Um, they've been, you know, outstanding tenants. They, you know, we started with them in their infancy, basically helping build up stuff like that. But we want to um, enter into um, a long-term uh, a lease agreement with both parties. We want it to coincide with our five-year master plan. So uh, specifically, it would be a little bit less than five years for both. Correct, right? Well, the plan expires um, December thirty-first, twenty sixteen. Okay, so it'll be it'll be good then. It'll yeah. just be a little bit over five years then. All right. Um, so with that being said, there's really um, any kind of no change. Let's get specifically to the when it comes down to the um, what do we got here? The restaurant. Uh, you know, we want the, the the term of the lease. We want to begin in October. We want a consideration of the monthly rent payments in relation to the restaurant's peak periods. In other words, when it's during the summer months, 
have it coincide a little bit higher than if something that's off season where it's going to be less traffic there. Same bottom line, but <clears throat> when they're correct, playing. it's going to be yeah, same bottom line throughout the year. Or, or excuse me, at the end of the year end. Considerations of revisions, the building maintenance, uh, taking on additional duties, preventative maintenance as far as the restaurant, restaurant equipment that he uses, uh, community service, which um, both parties have been really good about that, working with rec recreation department and community groups to offer their services you know, to, to people that... Fundraisers. Right, like fundraisers. Annual reporting, we, we request from each lease, uh, each tenant, that they have give us an annual report about how their business is doing, what we can do, you know, what they can do, feedback back and forth. Residents involved with each. Yeah. Insurance requirements, criminal background checks are uh, is something new came up. We want from both tenants, any kind of workers, we want them to do a, a, a background check. Same with all of our programs. We're getting, tidying that up quite a bit. Right. Now, when it comes to the um, equestrian center, same thing, term of agreement, co uh, coordinating with the master plan, the considerations of our uh, parks and recreation master plan, such as the, uh, the dog layout, you know, the, you know, the dog park, re re redoing the paddocks and such, uh, considerations to the amendments made 2009 utilities, interior building maintenance, and the white uh, storage barn. I'm sorry about that, no one on there. That's all right. <laughs> The community service, of course, with the uh, Blue Dots has been really good when it comes to uh, any kind of event that's held at the farm. They've been really good with the horses and even having some of their own events and promotional ideas there, which has been really good. Uh, supporting the equestrian club and, of course, the schools, which is a big part of uh, recreation here. Our annual reporting and, of course, the insurance requirements and criminal backgrounds, as I, as I said before, for the restaurant. So, um, <clears throat> with that being said, I'd like to read in a motion. Um, for the consideration for the purpose of having a final draft of a lease agreement for township board consideration and approval on Monday, September 12, 2011, the Community Recreation Commission recommends and authorizes Recreation Director and Community Recreation Commission Chair to enter negotiations with the purpose of finalizing contract with GT Foods Incorporated, i.e. Sharkies, to continue operating the restaurant and Water's Edge facility. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Bill, can I have a second? Second. John. Okay, when it comes to the uh, GT Foods Incorporated, anyone have any questions about Sharkies, about what our intentions are? Commission? I have a question. Well, what, are you, what are you talking, this preventive maintenance, is that going to be up to uh, Brian? Or is We're talking 50-50 right now. Right. right now it's ours. Right now, right, right now it's 100% ours. Right, right. right. So we want mm -hmm. him to start taking, you know, I mean, he's using the equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, if he wants to purchase new equipment, you know, pizza, something like this, it's going to be on GT's Foods. It's not ours. We're not in the restaurant business. Okay. All right. That's so, right. Uh, Mike, you got some questions? Sorry I was late. It's okay. GT Foods is the so you want we're going to enter into a, a five year lease. Correct. Okay. Just like the last one, really. Just like the last one, and the amount of the lease is. Uh, are you I'm still, still trying are you, to work you, that you, out? You still working out? I was gonna, is I that is that good? Is that a number that you feel like is good to cover the? Bond or whatever it is we're trying to pay back. Well, that's just part of the negotiations. We we, we got to get in, in depth with GT Foods to find out how they're doing, what we expect. It's going to be back and forth. This negotiation. We want to do this, what's best for the township. Obviously, it won't. I guarantee it won't be less. It won't be less. We want. We want as Good. as as representatives of the township. We want to get more. We want them to start taking more responsibilities, i.e. the maintenance and such, and obviously, you know, anything else. We like weekends, holiday, bathroom, maintenance. And all of that. If, uh, obviously this will, it's been motioned and seconded and we're discussing. The, uh, uh, the question that I have to you and the board is that once you two determine <coughs> this is what you would recommend, that will come to us for our approval then it would be recommended to the board. Correct. Township board, right? Correct, right? Well, we don't have another meeting. To, uh, oh, no, yeah, because what, yeah, what we're asking you is just for us to, to handle this well, whole commission. Tonight. Correct, yes. But, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be finalized by the board. <coughs> we're not, the okay. recommendation Okay, is so just, it's not coming back to right, us. Because, you too. Okay. Right, because we have no final say in any kind of contracts. The board That's is, fine. The board is, is it. That's fine. Mike, do you remember? I was just curious regarding GT Foods and the... Utilities at the restaurant. How those? 
are those pay who pays the utilities? We do. Okay. Yeah. And, and maybe in the future, GT could help pay the utilities. Correct. They have. They also have some ideas on revenue producers that that when Dale and I had sat down with them prior to summer <laughs> that they he'd like to investigate and propose back to the township. Sure. Good. The last question I have: is it, Do any other restaurant tours ever approach us to inquire about their opera? They I have someone seen. else. They may other people, but not me not as well. recreation director. And it would be not, you. Not me as chair okay. either. And the only time we ever did that is when we actually put it out for bids, and that's how we got Sharky's Restaurant. All right. Thanks. Okay, moving out to the public. Any questions from the public regarding GT Foods, Lise? All right, back. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion passes. Okay, reading another motion. For the purpose of having a final draft of the operating agreement for Township Board consideration and approval on Monday, September 12, 2011, the Community Recreation Commission recommends and authorizes Recreation Director and Community Recreation Commission Chair to enter negotiations with the purpose of finalizing contract with Luton Academy, Riding Academy to continue operating the Equestrian Center and Centennial Farm. Can I have a motion, please? I make a motion. Alpha second? Second. Mike. John. John. Oh, John, sorry. Okay, um, Commission, any questions as regarding to Luton Riding Academy? Any just, just to reiterate, they have been with us for seven years? Before. Seven years, correct, yep. Okay. Good. And they've done an outstanding job, and it's, we want them back. Any questions? Public, any numbers, questions? Oh, what? Uh, yeah, the numbers of uh, kids participating has, uh, What's the percentage up since last since the last year, or, or say two years ago? How many? How many? What's the growth? Of, uh, well, I don't have that with me, but I'll tell you what: it's growing fast with the equestrian clubs' participation, like this summer with camps. Yeah, that's definitely that community group entering the picture. That's working with uh, going out and recruiting and working with the community and promoting equestrian activities. That's made a dramatic difference in a lot of areas. But I don't have the, the the change, but I know it's gone up. I. You know, from the time that I've been spending over there, uh, I just am very. It's very encouraging to see how many kids, uh, how many new kids, uh, new faces are mm -hmm. there. You know, it's great. Yep, yeah, it is. Any other questions, commissioners? Out to the public. Any questions regarding Luke Ryan Academy? Please, anybody. All right, moving back. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Page raise your hand. There's no hand. Uh, pardon me, who? We have oh, oh, sorry. Uh, Please come to the party. Okay you got. Uh, what do you want? It's okay fine. Well, Page. come up to the podium and move aside. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you find out who the motion is? Do you need to have a motion? Okay. I want to make okay. sure Page I have that. The motion. The well, Excuse I'm me, Page. Hang on a second. Right. Do you want to know the motion? Yeah, Page. Page is done. Who is the motion? Bill and John. Bill and John. Okay. Okay, sorry. Sorry, Page. Page. Where'd she go? Oh. <laughs> so I just wanted to no, uh, no, support the motion and to support the, you know, continued, uh, uh, program with Luton Riding Academy. I um, am very much involved in the uh, Brazil Equestrian Club and will vouch for what Tim said that we've had a whole lot of um, exciting activity happening there. We more than doubled the number of kids that got to participate in the uh, horse day camp that we just completed last week. Um, we're just everybody working together. Rob's been running a great program for years, but um, by all of us working together, you know, we're pretty good at promoting things and, and letting people know about things so that more people um, are getting to participate. We, you know, talked to him about offering two camps rather than one this year, and we filled them both up. They were really fun and very successful yeah. um, events. And just for everyone to know, too, Paige was really instrumental, too, in working with Ann to do a market analysis and everything like this and really kind of look at it from a different perspective and stuff like this. So, you know, all that work was really appreciated. Appreciate that. Well, thank you. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that, you know, I, I support it. Um, I know that the members, the board members of our club all support, uh, you know, keeping this going and Rob's great with kids and he's great with horses and um, it's a, really a very positive thing for the community. So I just wanted to put my two cents See, we really want him here, see? Well, I do, but I, you know, there's a few people who might we have other ideas. I don't know. So I just want to make sure we don't that like we do this people. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, as an aside also, the, 
animal shelter gets a lot of good support from the Lutons as far as uh, people coming down there to volunteer and help. And uh, Oh, it's not just them. Earth Society, yeah, everybody down there's there. A lot there. Of, you know, right? It generates a lot of positive. Yeah, there's a lot great, of uh, yeah. response yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Thank you, fellow commissioners. That was a tough one. All right. I'll save that for last. All right. Moving on. Recreation director's report. Okay. Just I'll go real briefly. Summer um, project update. Mr. Rooney. Okay. Uh, real briefly, we made a heavy concentration on the painting at the farm. We started out along East River repairing fences and painting by the neighbors. They've been really patient. Um, I want to get some more. I want to get some feedback from them and see what what they think. Um, but as far as that fencing, working with the subcommittee and, and the equestrian club, have we did any kind of fence repairing at all? And are we using concrete yet to for for? We uh, did by the gates fence? on the east side, but we um, haven't done any posts, I believe, out in the paddock areas. Okay, we're we're gonna probably get into the last area we um, are focusing on is the um, paddocks that are just east of the outdoor arena because okay. those are more heavily used right now we're concentrating on the equestrian paddocks that are across the street from the dog park and they're moving pretty fast on those okay um, but I was going to talk to Rob about some some boards and that but once again I don't um, see any projects happening this year with the uh, those paddocks and that's something <coughs> You know, we'll talk more about down the okay. road because it's um, so that project I feel is going good. We, you know, the drainage, the two drainage projects I mentioned at the last meeting, um, the dog park. We took time to go in there and uh, paint that and take a little extra care along the bottom where there's the screening, the metal screening. Um, I actually had to bring uh, Mike from Michigan Deck and Fence in to do that because the other paint wasn't really sticking down there and didn't look too good. So, okay. so we completed that. Um, the pond irrigation. Mark did that on a weekend for us, Mark Tiso. Um, so that pond is, Bill will probably touch on that later. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. At, at, at the golf course? Yes, a, we rerouted the, oh, okay. the, the piping. Okay. Good. Um, we did probably 80 to 90 gyro fields. Pretty good response from the officers of gyro. They said we did a real good job. We're doing the grass cutting for the soccer fields for Gisa, and you know they do all the chalking. And, that. and that's done. The halls that working out with them doing the striping or anything like that. Very good. good. Okay. Very good. And uh, playscape is just an ongoing problem. We've repaired everything. Um, we did what the pest control um, pest masters told us to do. We power washed it. We resealed it. Then we uh, treated it for wasps and bees, and they were back again. And I got a call that the car was vandalized yesterday. So, and the lady called the township, and my office said, "Do you ever do any maintenance there?" So it just—it's so defeating with that that site. Have fellow commissioners got I don't like so I don't know. Yeah, for, it's just not funny coming on and having to handle that, you know, update the playscape, you know, scenario of the projects. But it's those uh, faraway places, man. It's yeah, it's tough to, to monitor. Anything at uh, Water's Edge besides the irrigation pond? A lot the well, or or they've done a couple ma major irrigation repairs, and now they're doing the smaller ones. Um, and, you know, we did. I report on that a couple months ago, all okay. the, the work in the marina that we okay. did, you know, repairing the docks and lighting and outlets and things like that. So, all right. What about budget update? Okay. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. It was attached to your email. No. If you go, uh, as I described, uh, on each page, if you look at it, the, the, the column on the left is the budgeted um, item. So we set for the year on each, each account. And then to the right is what we spent year to date or the revenue year to date. And as we've done in the last couple of years, we've really stayed under our expenses, really watched that closely. The problematic area, again, would be the golf course because of the 49 out of 60 days of rain in April and May. And that hurt the sale of our passes, you know, our option passes and our season passes. Um, I met with Mark Tiso, who's uh, maintenance supervisor and we look we went, both went over the figures um, yesterday or was it this morning and you know we're aware of it and our, his big hope this year was to spend since we readjusted the staff and the cuts and things like that he was going to spend the winter 
taking care of a lot of those repairs that we've put off for five, six years. Right. But we'll also be able to, with Mark being on, we'll be able to stay longer. We're not going to be closing the course October 1, no, October no. 31. If we have a nice day, we'll be able to open up, correct? Right, definitely. Okay. But I was hoping with the, the funding not coming in as well as we thought because of the bad weather, um, we were hoping that he could do more maintenance projects, but I'll have to meet with him and Ann and Dale and see what we can, you know, maybe come up with. But it's it's a struggle. Okay. But overall, we really stayed a course on the expenses. Um, that that's where I think the biggest problem area is right now. Um, we're a little ahead on our spending at the farm, but as the warm weather goes and the cold season hits, those projects slow down, and um, as the um, cell tower fees come in, we don't use them quite as quickly. How so that'll, marina, that'll level off. How about the marina budget? We got a seawall to pay for and stuff like that. We're doing we're doing okay. That's on okay. That? Yes. Okay. Any questions for Tim regarding the summer projects or budget updates? No, but may I ask how the parking lot is coming? Yeah, we met on that today. Um, I'll reiterate it again. It's not our fault it's taken this long. It's people that had to make decisions in another location. The funding's all approved. Almost after 10 months of finally getting all the OKs and getting log jammed somewhere, <laughs> um, the company that could do it um, now isn't able to do it, or, and they wanted to use um, a speck of mix. Less, of less a great mix. Yeah, and it's more of a state mix than a county mix, and our engineers recommend sticking with the, the county. Um, more heavy duty. Um, for the regular parking lot projects, the, the, um, not that it's not important to us, but the fire department also has a project in this whole thing, and those fire trucks go over that, and he, Duncan wanted to stay right, with that. Right, because of the piggyback with our parking lot, the fire department parking lot, and what other one? Is there another one, or is just the two? We have the, our regular parking lot at Watershed, the lunar surface. Right. And then we have the ADA under the block grant. Right. And then Duncan, fire chief, has uh, repair replacement right. at the fire department. Because, right, because of the piggyback, because his right. truck's the okay. So um, I received a letter today after talking with the other company, uh, Reigns is recommending the second bidder and we'd have to go back to the board. And that would be for the upcoming meeting on September 12th. It's about $400 more overall. So we're any, not giving up. Any other questions? It's embarrassing. Okay. It's tough. <laughs> all right. Um, old business. Hey, what, is that all, Tim? Are you good? Yeah, I'm good unless the commissioners have comments. No. Or questions. Uh, old business, inline skate project, progress report. Tim, you want to give us a little background yeah. about where we stand with this and they can... Right. Um, it's very important that we get our millage request into the county for a recreation project um, in September. The, the county's budget is finalized October, November. And under the recreation millage, they do have to allot some for local communities. We uh, last submitted in 2006. It's 2011. It's been five years. There's been some other communities that have had two or three projects supported. Um, so I'd like to get it to the board um, for the first meeting in September. And what I did was I put together a very rough draft of where I was heading. I know that the description, page two, purpose, uh, uh, site description, facility description, project description, need for project are all a little bit too wordy. Um, the second to the last page is the cost estimate. I want to focus on the cement slab, what we can afford and use, and then work with the community. Once again, as I told you, um, we've got probably three or four good support groups that use the basketball court but want this court, and they'll help us fundraise. But for the grant, for the millage funding, we want to go for 59000 and we have about uh, we have a community donation of nine thousand right now, and we'd like to get uh, fifty thousand in support from the, the county, if that makes sense. And then there's another whole phase of this project where we already have boards that we've built for the current basketball court that we can use. We want to do some striping, um, some lighting, and other things. And after all the engineering is said and done, it's going to be around uh, probably about ninety-five to ninety-seven thousand dollars. All right, so just to recap again, this is going to be an inline all-season skating rink between the volleyball court and the basketball court. It's not going to crochet on either property. We're going to, it's going to be made to fit. It's not going to be Olympic size. It's going to be something recreation size. This is going to be good for uh, summer with the inline skating and then easily convertible to convert to uh, winter ice skating. 
and uh, which we've been having for the last few years, which been and that's been growing in popularity big time too. Everyone seems to like it. But the whole idea of this is that this grant monies, like you said, we haven't asked for it in a while. We got to ask for it. If we get approved for it, we still have the opportunity not to accept it if we can't get the matching funds. But the whole idea is we got to put Grozeal out there with Wayne County to get some of these funds and then try to see if we can get our monies from there. Um, as far as the uh, recreation master plan, we, we have no no projects. This is the one project we have for five years. Everything else is maintenance, 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 upkeep of what we have on our properties. So we're pretty pretty confident that you know over the long term we can come up with monies. Tim, you want to add something? Yeah, um, every community after they receive funding from Wayne County, they're supposed to put up a sign. Uh, we were very good about it. That's the sign that's on the basketball court. Um, we give them credit and then also recognize the people in the community. Why that is it shaking? Right, because of the air conditioning unit. Oh. I just, this is a very typical day in the summer. This isn't just one day when it was used. I mean, it's constant. And in line, and the ice skating will be the same. Mm -hmm. Right, because I mean, even the volleyball hall, it's picked up with tournaments and stuff like that, too. I mean, there's always people over there. <clears throat> Any questions regarding the the um, the submission that we that uh, Tim's proposing? I, I think you need to reiterate about we need to apply for it. If we get it, we don't need to correct move. It. But we have to apply now. We have to apply for it. It's, it's there's nothing that says we're going to get it for sure. But if we do are lucky enough to get it, it's not like we're that's it. We got to do it. We can still pull on if we can't get the matching funds. But this is this is a 50-50 grant. Yeah, the biggest item in this project is the cement concrete slab. Right. And um, when we approach the board, we're not saying we're using any of our money right now. We want to get the fifty thousand. We have a community donation of around nine thousand. We'd like to use that to secure that pad. We already have a pad we're using that the community goes in and sets up an ice rink or you know other things. We're actually going to do pickleball on the basketball court, but um. I just think it'll be, if we can get the cement pad, it's going to really um, create interest and it's going to create spirit within the community. Those user groups raise money every year to, to run the ice rink. They're going to go out and raise money for them. We already have some of it. Right. And with the community group, I mean, they're talking about even trying to go out for more donations and stuff like this through corporations or private donations. But if they see that we got this matching grant, it's like we we're talking about that swelling support right. of the community. People really start getting together and getting behind it and they're going, you know what, I'll kick in 50, I'll kick in 100 or someone's business or something like this. That's what we're up because a lot of people do use it during the winter and I just imagine what it would be like during the summer. And this is the way to do it during these times when there's not a lot of money to go around. we got to build in phases. Correct. And that's why we're only doing the slab. Like the slab time. only. Right. Any other questions? All right. So we're good to go, Tim, for this then? All right. Any new business? Well, I should say any other old business first. Anybody? Okay, any new business? Anyone else want to say anything there? All right, moving to the subcommittee updates. Open space greenways, Leah's excused. Bill Moreau, golf committee update. He's here. Uh, again, I don't think my mic's working. You want mine? No, let me, yeah, I just want to make sure that community hears all the good things uh, as you know this has been just an absolute crazy year for golf not only for girls eel but for all the states Illinois Indiana Ohio Michigan the, the rounds of golf up to the end of May in all those states were down around 30 percent and uh, so we're hoping that the weather that we will get this week will be cool all the way to the end of the year, like up to December. 
because we could use the rounds of golf, which is very beneficial and helps keeping the course the way it needs to be. And the course is really in beautiful shape, despite the fact that there is a lot of problems when you get a lot of rain, which we did in the spring. And then we got that big dry spell, which causes other grass problems. So again, we've been, Mark and his team, and our committee has been working very diligently in getting the right people, the right place, the right chemicals, in the right spots. We do have some blight on the course, but uh, that is to be expected with the weather that we've had. So given that, uh, and uh, Tim mentioned the irrigation, that uh, we lost the irrigation when they put in the basketball court, and that has been rectified now. The uh, water that we're getting into the pond now, the pond level on number nine hole is to the level that it should be. And uh, there is scum, a very, very thin layer of scum that's on the surface, which it's too late now to spend a lot of money to get rid of it. But in the spring, we will be able to treat the pond uh, before all this stuff starts growing. And so the pond should be nice and blue and, and uh, watered uh, all year long next year. So it should look beautiful and just keep your ball, golf balls out of there. <laughs> and uh, let's see, on the trimming, for those of you in the community who haven't played on the course or ones that are playing now, we have uh, trimmed a, a fairway for the young kids, the women, and some of us older people who can't get to the green all the time. Uh, we've trimmed that back so that we actually have a fairway on number one. We've extended the fairway on number two, 15 to 20 feet to the left, so that people who can't drive the ball past the trees have an opportunity to stay left and shoot over the trees to get to the green. Uh, we also have trimmed back uh, quite a ways on number six. <coughs> and for the uh, us old folks and the women and the kids that are playing, We've actually made a nice fairway on number seven for people who can't go over those two trees that are going to uh, to get to the green. Uh, well, I couldn't get over those either, so you can throw me into that group. Well, uh, yeah, I, it's a very difficult hole. So what we did is we trimmed that back, so now we have a fairway, so it's easier to hit the ball back up onto the green. Um, we are also going to take and uh, trim about 20 feet off of the bottom of those two trees that are there. So that'll help people who hit a lower trajectory ball without hitting the branches. You're helping a lot of people. Oh, well, we, well, we just want to make it comfortable and, and uh, get people to say, yeah, this is not so keep us busy, <laughs> Billy. Uh, okay, and then uh, the water issues you mentioned. We have a lot of water breakdowns uh, this year uh, just due to the age of the plumbing that's watering the golf course. And uh, Mark has just been going and Gary crazy. too. Mark and Gary. And really Gary, good. yeah. Both of them have been working, trying to get, we think we got a pretty good handle on it now. Um, all of the trees that we planted last year that were donated, we only had three arborvitaes that were replaced very nicely from Costco, uh, without a question. Uh, we took them back. They've been replaced. All the other trees that were donated are growing. They're looking beautiful as we had hoped that they would, and uh, they'll continue to grow and beautify, beautify, beautify the course. We also have about uh, seven pine trees on at the back side of number seven that has to come down. Those are going to die from the... Uh, ash borer? The ash borer, not the ash borer, but the, it, yeah, yeah, the, the fertilizer? pine... Huh? The fertilizer? No, no, it's from the... Uh, it's like an ash borer, only it's the pine trees, the big... Scotch pines? Where? Because they are all over, with the pesticides. All over the country. Yeah. It's the pesticides. No, it's all over the country. Right, but it's because of this pesticide they were selling. What yeah. pesticide? So, um, who, 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 was it a cargo or oh, someone well. or someone? I don't want to get into that because yeah. I got but a wait, where, where, What pine trees are they at? Where are they at? On the they're they're on, on uh, the back side of the green on number seven. Beyond there are those uh, the beautiful cluster of Scotch pines that are dying. They've been dying all over the island. They're dying in areas where they're not using pesticide all over North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, I go down there every year and I see these millions of trees that are dying. And it's the same kind of a thing as the ash borer. 
they've gotten into the scotch pine and to the bark and underneath the bark and they're killing them. So we have those to get rid of. So if anyone wants to volunteer and say, I'll come down and cut those up, mm -hmm. uh, please call Bill Morrow or Tim. Uh, let's see. We are going to, believe it or not, finally get to leveling the tee box on number seven. And so that will be done this year and it's supposed to be done within the next two weeks. Uh, we had a very, very good uh, volunteer and a very good uh, committee meeting. And uh, let's see, the last thing is that we have uh, softened the greens up. The, the greens are nicer to putt, but they're softer to hold the ball because you know they're all elevated. And we've actually verticut all the greens now so that the grass, when it grows up on a green, it has a tendency to grow this way, which can really mess up your putting. Well, anyway, they've all been verticut now, and the putting is just, just wonderful. So I can't say enough about the course and the effort that the people have put into it. So please come out and golf. And Tim has worked up brand new pricing uh, to go through the remainder of the year. So please contact the recreation office and take advantage of those great prices. Come on down. So let's see. Verticutting, the trimming. What do you got? Six, six, six shots off your uh, handicap? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so concentrating on the course. I haven't hit nothing. All right. Thank you. Any, any questions to, to Bill? All right. Marina, Mr. Swales. Once again, I want to apologize for being late. Yes, for filling my commitment at Water's Edge playing in my golf league. Hey, there you go. Uh, and Bill, I did... Uh, I don't agree with you about the greens. I two putt every green tonight, so I don't think that <laughs> new cutting <laughs> was making it better. Yeah, I'm trying. Two putt. Um, for the marina, the first thing of importance was a security issue I want to bring up. About a month ago, the marina dock holders that live on their boat reported that there was an incident one afternoon. It seemed like some maybe high school age boys were running through the marina, caused some damage, caused some vandalism put a real scare into one of the uh, the people that live on their boat there. Everybody on this committee was notified via email, and I know there was a lot of reply. I know the chief of police is aware. I think even Bill, one of your volunteers, may Rangers. have recognized these boys as this was going on. I don't know that they were caught, but I just want to make people aware that that was a concern of people that stay at the marina. <clears throat> I know the chief of police was made aware of it. Tim, you're aware of it. Yeah, we know aware of it. that. It was a dock okay. holder? One of them was a son of a dock holder. So I think just the fact that you know who it is and, uh, and that the, everybody's aware is important because we want that place to be safe all the time and not everywhere can be safe all the time. But Yeah, the ranger uh, tracked them as they were crossing the street. He warned them. He told them that the authorities could become involved very quickly, not to do it again, um, and that's where we left it. Good. Yeah, because if you could tell your your um, your fellow boaters down there, piers for dock holders only. I mean, you know, the whole area is open to the public and stuff like this, but the dock holders have those piers. And no fishing. Any issues, call GI police. On the piers. Good. You must report it. So, um, next issue. Which we still have about six stocks that we haven't leased all year. So that represents maybe eight or nine thousand dollars revenue. Uh, you know, we got to find boats to take those docks next year. We got six or seven real good docks available. If we don't get the summer revenue, we don't get the winter storage revenue. So it represents maybe ten or twelve thousand for summer and winter for those six docks. So we we have good docks available. Just want to see if we can't get them, you know, rent it out next year. Right. We budgeted for seventy-five thousand. I think we went up a little bit from seventy-four or something. And right now we have about seventy-two four in uh, marina summer, dock. Summer dockage. Summer dockage. Summer. Yes. Yeah. So we're a couple thousand shy. I know that several of the local marinas are down much more than than we are. But right. We have a very good following. Good. Good group of patrons so they're pretty loyal and I think we can we still have some we have one person we still need to collect from several letters have went out that's probably in the eight hundred dollar range and we have a gentleman that just pulled a boat in today for the last month so I'm thinking we'll finish around the seventy three and a half seventy four thousand dollar mark and we budgeted seventy five so that's kind of where we're budgeting and I did speak with the gentleman Chris who brought his boat in today and it's good yeah. to have a boat in permanently even just for another month or two I know he said there were some issues with the electrical at that time. Yeah, and I, he was going to meet with Barry down there today. Yeah. At six. 
Another interesting thing with that gentleman, I guess he was on like an all-state uh, football team. He was a quarterback, but you know what I didn't know? Bob Wisher was all-state in football, former commissioner. Bob defensive, Wisher? Yeah, defensive back and running back. And, and he, he also gone, no. could have gone pro for baseball. Yeah, Bob, Bob Wisher played uh, college at Eastern and is a very good athlete. But yeah, Chris and him went to school together. I understand. Yeah, but that was a little chunk of trivia I thought was pretty darn it. Bob never brought that up. And I never knew that. Regarding those empty docks, I just remind this commission that the West River Yacht and Cruising Club had made an offer to us to lease an entire dock earlier this year. Now that didn't happen. I don't know if they'll be interested in doing it next year, but if they were offered to do that and, and lease a whole dock, we'd be booked solid and we'd be full of boats and revenue. So I don't know if that's going to happen again, but they did offer to do that at our marina earlier this year. Um, the boardwalk has attracted a whole lot of daily uh, boats coming in on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That is full. <coughs> I can't believe how many boats are coming in, so I think that's really good. Um, you know, people are coming in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a lot of boats. I talk to them, I help them tie up, I remind them there's a $5 fee, and they go up the hill and you know hopefully we're collecting those five dollar fees because that'll help the revenue as well but I'm impressed about how many boats are coming on the weekends well this is what I've got for um, temporary dockage and transient um, and I'll double check these figures and confirm them next month um, Annette was out but I usually rely on her to get those figures for me um, so far for 2011 we've collected 2135 and transients here's the, all of them right here good and Did last year at this that? point we collected around from the about Lucille. two thousand so but I get there's might be a little bit of a gray in there but I'll make sure to get a, a, an accurate count but that's where I think we're going to run a little bit further ahead one change I made was last year we had um, Dan had worked out where Doc one Doc Pier one would collect as they came in I felt as a township and uh, you know it was a one-year try and we can go back to the old way I felt that they should come up either to the pro shop or Sharkies I thought them by going to the restaurant would create a relationship where they got used to dealing with them instead of somebody absolutely else. Tim I mean what, if it was one person that I had on duty all the time that was going to be collecting or a couple regular staff but it really wasn't so I, I thought mainly I thought that was too much on our patrons to be our responsible customers, for that. Our that that's the reason I did it, it was no I appreciate the the work they saved us have we missed some bolts? I would say probably. Did we miss some last year? I would say probably. Did we miss more this year or last year? I'm not certain. I think the, the marina is becoming more popular. We may have. But we're trying to build a relationship with the boulders and sharkies and getting them comfortable and also getting our staff used to that. But um, Yeah, if Mike, if, like if we can get back to the to the Pier 1 and the Bowl Club, um, Tim's, you know, like I say, is he getting 100%? Probably not. Um, no, it's it's an honor system. It, you can't force people uh, uh, to right. be honest. Absolutely, but uh, the, the whole idea is is not to have our customers down there right. to be sitting there play, 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 uh, playing patrol and having to worry about. They're there. They pay their money for the docks. They're there to relax, and enjoy their time. They should have to worry about. You know, if you want to go like what you did, greet people. That's great. That's the girls the old way and stuff. Say hello, stuff like that. But. Sharky's being the tenant up there. It's an arrangement with them where most of the people who go up the hill probably, hopefully, going up the hill to either <laughs> golf, swim, the or restaurants, the, the restaurant. dog. Right. You know, so that's what we're hoping. Um, so I, I think Tim's call, we got to honor his. his uh, and we can review that at season end, and I'll get totally accurate figures, but I think we're running <laughs> ahead. But is it more popular and we miss some? I, that's something we got to talk about. Yeah. But let's get the final numbers and stuff like this. Review it if you want to with Tim on his side. But I think we're I think we're doing a, you know, an okay job. I think we're doing okay. Oh, job. I agree. And I, I wasn't <clears> saying <throat> anything to the contrary. It's just kind no, of no, no. I know you were. I just want you to like you know get some feedback back to to the to the to the boat group. You know stuff like that. Let them know. You know, let them go. I, you. I think Tim's report is what if, if people are questioning how much revenue we're right. receiving. Tim just answered the question. Correct. And. I yeah. think that's all people want to hear. No, we do care. I mean, we oh, I, uh, we all care. You're right. Yeah. Because I'll tell you right now, we paid a lot of extra money for that seawall, which when we had to go back and redo the whole thing instead of have the engineering with the, the building. So, um, you know, we need right. We, we need the revenue. We need that pay down that seawall. Correct. Tim, I just noticed today a no fishing sign. Yeah, we had them for a couple weeks, and I I told Brian we need to get those up. They're on each pier where they okay. 
Yeah, not at the entrance anymore, but they're on each of the pavement right. piers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. I'll just reiterate, regarding uh, non-motorized or kayak, I still believe that Water's Edge is a great location for a non-motorized or, or kayak. And We had two ladies <laughs> kayak and, and went over the rocks on the south end. They said it's a beautiful spot this week. She, I thought maybe she'd come to the meeting. Wow. Yeah, whether it's the south end or the north end, um, there's potential there. Oh, there is. I'd love to see us do that. Last but not least, uh, oh, no, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Any questions? Anything like that? All right. I just want to add something to, for Mike. Uh, at when there's Tuesday, car, the Tuesday car shows and the Thursday bike shows, uh, when you're mingling with the crowds out there uh, admiring their bikes. And their cars. They also have made comments. To, uh, some of the guys, some of the owners, have made comments to me about uh, the marina. And I said, "Well, come on down. You know, come on down, take a look while you're, you know, uh, while your vehicle is being uh, checked out uh, above." And they have. Uh, I've seen a number of folks go down there and take a little walk uh, along those edges and uh, admire, and they're admiring of that. And that's another way of uh, just building up the numbers of people uh, and uh, hopefully uh, food that's eaten and uh, drink, drink that's got to be gotten over there. So, uh, All right, thank you. Yep. Centennial Farm, Lover Ryan's absent, Airport Recreation Area, Myring's absent, Oh, my favorite one. Senior citizens, Miss Yops. <laughs> thank, thank you all. <laughs> the Don River Senior Olympics hosted by Melvindale on August the 1st to the 5th. We had 16 seniors from uh, Gross Seal attended, and they brought back 20 medals. <laughs> this was pretty good. Wow. Mm -hmm. There are 23 activities to participate in, from baking to a car show and sports in between. And it ends with a wonderful dinner at Crystal Gardens. <laughs> and August the 11th, uh, the sweet summertime picnic lunch sponsored by the Recreation Department was very good. We had great music and prizes, and it was fairly well attended. We really hope to have more people. And it's for seniors 55 and up. And I know a lot of people don't like to be called seniors now because we're all so very mobile, but I haven't thought of anything else we can be called. I went on a bus trip one time, and on the bus it said recycled teenagers, but I'm not <laughs> sure it was all that either. <laughs> and our senior club has added two members, and we'll begin a series of show-and-tell programs, favorite hobbies, trips, any special events, and a pizza party on September the 27th. The September the 21st on Wednesday from 9 to 3 is an expo for seniors at Crystal Gardens Banquet Center in Southgate. The vendors representing housing, home care, medical services and equipment, financial, legal services, transportation, and more. And the free admission, free parking, and door prizes. And I did take a afternoon and go over and talk to the people at the Trenton Recreation about what they do for their seniors just to see if I can find some new ideas for, the, for our seniors on Gross Hill. Then Bill and I attended a ceremony this morning at the Pilot House for the return of the Gross Hill Naval Station tea service that was unceremoniously moved to Selfridge Field when the base closed in 1969, and it's been stored there all these years. It's now be going to be placed in the museum at the Township Hall, and we say, welcome home, tea set. It's beautiful. The tea service is awesome, and was it also the ceremony was really great. Also, a little plug here for a book, the U.S. Naval Air Station Gross Seal, new local book being published by the Gross Seal Historical Society, will be available November the 21st, and pre-orders are being taken by Claire Kester. And then the second annual Veterans Gala, September the 17th from 4 to 9. They're saluting the Korean era veterans, a special tribute to the Naval Air Station Gross Seal veterans. It's a wonderful party. Tickets are $15 per person, and they're going fast at the Township Hall Treasurer's <coughs> Office. They have a live band, all kinds of music, dancing displays, fireworks, a silent auction, airplane display, and the Screaming Eagles are coming in at 4 p.m. and bring the flag overhead, and then there's food, beverages at a nominal co cost. So, thank you.
And also, they're, they're asking for donations for any of the silent auction items. If anybody wants to donate, please oh, drop, drop it off the township manager's office. Yes, and they're done. <clears throat> Thank you, Ethel. You're welcome. Schools, Mr. Conroy. Uh, with, well, <clears throat> uh, with a grand graduating, I'll be going back to the student council and uh, looking for a new uh, membership to uh, represent us or represent the, the students uh, to come to and have him or her come to our meetings. Uh, Agron was a great addition and uh, we hope to get someone uh, just like him. Uh, I want to echo Ethel with the uh, as far as uh, Senior Olympics go because of uh, the, the two, those Senior Olympics Ethel we now also have uh, Taylor as part of our uh, growing number of people that are being uh, that are part of all senior activities, and uh, I think Taylor. Uh, not only do they have a big, they have a larger center and a number of uh, rooms set aside for specific activities. Uh, they're very they're very encouraging and very open for uh, us to become part of them. So that's that's all good. All right. Thank you, John. Yep. All right. <coughs> Playscape, Hainer Magron. Okay. Um, I, I took some pictures at the Playscape, so I'll be at the Here, you talk. I, you want me to go for the oh, pictures? Sure. Okay. Can you one, want? Those ones show beads. Oh, no, no. I'm going to show the picture. You can talk as I take the picture. Oh, okay. All right. We'll be part You know what? Do the vandalism ones first. That's the vandalism one. Thank you, Mal. Zoom. This this picture right here that you can see, that's when you're first walking from the parking lot to to the playscape. So you can see the walkway, that sign that lists all the rules of the playscape, it um was knocked over. And that was just this afternoon, like yeah. after three o'clock. Okay, so the sign there. Okay. The next yeah, this one you can see where that little rubber bridge that's all chewed up that the wood. That was that was last that was last week when I was there. I saw that. I was just kind of trying to get myself familiarized with the playscape because my children are older, so I hadn't been there in a while. Um, okay, this one would show. This picture shows where I saw some wasps flying around. There's but they were called yesterday to come out again. Okay. This one also, where um, towards the bottom, this flat area, yep, right down, yeah. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you all. Where the bees are, or wasps, are flying into these flat areas. Yep. Where, um, like at the bottom there, along where the rubber is, or actually on the top part. Yep, right there, yeah. I saw some wasps flying in to, um, you know, they're just kind of going in, and I saw a few go in there, so I, that was last week. When did you do the treatment in Springton? No, the treatment happened, uh, it was just after we completed the power washing spray, probably in July. In July? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is looking from the Plainscape towards Macomb Street. This, this white building is the bank. And you can just see this is, um, maybe we could just do a little more trimming back so that it makes it a little more visible. Mm -hmm. um, this is also looking towards the bank to uh, just maybe, just to make it safer, I guess. I, as I know, last week when I went to the Playscape, I was by myself, and it actually felt a little creepy walking back there. You know, just tidy up a little bit. Right, tidy up. Very. Thank you, Walt. That's a good way to say it. And plus, it just makes it a little more visible from the road to be able to see. So you don't feel so isolated being back there. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of how I felt. Was just. Mm -hmm. um, 
Is that salon cigarette? Is that what that is? That's um, looking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's looking yeah. to Macomb Street, the bank, and then that other building. That's kind of going towards the east side of. This is looking towards the east side of. This goes the all place. the way across to right here in the front? Yeah, it used to be higher than number because of security reasons. We. Uh, cut it in half a oh, couple okay. years ago, so the police could go behind the bank and look, but it, that didn't work either. <clears throat> Not their fault. Uh, this is looking from the place gate going back toward the parking lot. Just it, it just looks maybe it could be trimmed back a little more. That um, this is because you would actually this view would be looking towards the post, the back side of the post office. So maybe if there's some of that, we can just yeah. trim. That might not be a bad. Same thing with this. It's just um, you can see that there is a fence under that. Maybe we could just Somewhere do a little more trimming. Someplace. Yes. And this is just another picture. Of maybe it could be trimmed back. Um, this is where we have the kids that go back. This path right through here goes right into the woods. Yes. So when the police do come, if there's any kind of issues, that's where they go. And then they take off there. Okay. And there used to be a fence there in that opening there, but that kept getting knocked down this summer, so I didn't put it back up for the third time. Um, that's just kind of the east side of the place gate, too. Maybe some of that could be trimmed back as well. Looks like I the rain. Kind of Looks like the rainforest. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And this is this is just some some growth that's come along the fence that would be on the back side of the post office building. Maybe that also would just be trimmed back. Oh, now these. This is. This looks kind of damaged. It's like a post of some kind. Yeah, I would like that was um, the the lighting project they did several years ago. But there was really no reason to light. Well, the rec department wasn't involved in that. They actually had lighting going to a dark playscape, which was not okay. really. Explain about how parks we like to see that work when the sunset goes down. Yeah. Yeah. It's so when so well, when, when it gets dark, you don't want kids on the playground. You don't want it yet. Yeah. You right, don't want it but um, we've talked about removing those. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. The, the I, I power's off, it, but it, we it's mm -hmm. unsightly. I just I noticed it looked damaged, so it's, I thought, well, they've been, not we, knowing the history behind it, I took pictures. We kept repairing those, and it got too costly. I, I guarantee you, there's more than just that one. It's damaged too. Oh, yes. here's another yeah. one. I thought I got a picture of it, but I guess I didn't. There, there is. There's two of them that look like this. Uh, since our last meeting, though, and we, we kind of will talk about the commission. Any feedback from anyone from the public or in anyone else about any thoughts about what they want to do to the playscape or anything like that? Did you, did you get anything at all, Ann? Um, any feedback from anybody? You know, I asked a couple <laughs> people about it, and just the, the feedback I get from kids is we, we don't really go back there because things happen there, you know, and and I, it, it makes you feel bad. It does. It, it really does. does. It makes you feel bad knowing, I mean, I even asked my, you know, other, other people, and they said, well, I hope when they sprayed it, they first bleached it, you know, I, and, um, wow. It just, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's, and it's sad because it's such a beautiful playscape. But I, when I went back there twice, well, now, the one day, when I went back there one day, uh, was last week, as I was leaving, a teenage okay. couple was walking back there, and I introduced myself and said, you know, who I was, what I was doing there, and um, and I said, you know, what brings you to the place, Gabe? And these two kids wouldn't even look at me. <laughs> um, and, and the boy said, well, we're just going to talk. Yeah, I and, and I thought, oh, you know, um, it it just it makes you feel bad. But there, you know, there were no families back there. But I have to admit, it was it was really warm. I mean, once you get into that that confine, it was like hot. Mm -hmm. um, the condition of the wood compared to many of them in the area is outstanding because we've sealed it, but it just keeps getting vandalized, and it's right. in a secluded area. And then with our staff cuts, you know, we have three full time for all that we do. We just can't get there. Right. Remember, like, it'll be twenty years in November that that I place is twenty one. Right, one ninety ninety one. And they said the life was fifteen to twenty. We've kept it alive, but I'm not saying do away with it. But I, 
we just don't have the staffing to keep up or try to police it. And then when we fix it, we can't get back right away because we're doing farm, we're doing airport, we're doing water's edge. We, our staff is small. Well, so that's and that's I'm not whining complaining. It's I mean, that's what we, when we ask everyone else about the different options, about relocating it, to tearing it down, to moving it, to to installing cameras. I mean, that's what we need feedback from the community mm -hmm. as far as what to do with this piece of property, how we can you know, big, maintain it. Yeah, lighting and uh, cameras. Mm -hmm. Two big issues. Absolutely. Anything else? Um, so, I, you know, what I will do is start asking more people, what would be your opinion to, to dealing with this? I mean, it, it, it's beautiful. I mean, when I walked back there, you could tell it had just been sealed and painted. That It's, it's a beautiful playscape. It's just unfortunate that a lot of people aren't using it. But it seems to have gotten a poor reputation. With the Many communities have, there. have removed that, those leather playscapes over the last 10 years. I mean, if it was to actually have a certified playground inspector come in, it wouldn't, it's grandfathered in, it wouldn't uh -huh. pass a, a safety inspection Today's because of the way the boards are placed and, you know, the access and, you know, the different things mm -hmm. that, so, but it's... Yeah, it's evolved, yeah. So, I, I, and it, it's, it's unfortunate that it doesn't get used as much, but, I, you know, we can at least see, you know, it is kind of back there and, you know, I, I, so I'll have to start looking in and asking people what may be their option, what they'd like to see, or maybe could we move it, or we'll just kind of have to go forward from there. And but we will go back and make those repairs again and, mm -hmm. and then concentrate on the things that Ann has mentioned. And then I want to add about the DDA park, pocket park. Brian Loftus asked for input from us commissioners and obviously the public about what they want to see that DDA park. The plans are in the... Um, in the office there by uh, Carol. Could somebody give a presentation to us at our next meeting so we can see what? I can invite Brian. Actually, I thought Brian wanted to come here today, and um, I actually forget, I forgot about that, that he said he might want to stop by. I'll, I'll put an invitation out there so we can discuss the DDA park then for the next meeting then. All right, anything, any questions about the place, Kate? Anyone? Extended public comment. <coughs> anyone? Individual commissioner comments. Ethel, anything more to add? Oh, thank you. Ann? Uh, no. I'm no. No. Nope. Chad? No, thanks. Mike? No. Tim? Walt says no. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Bill, second? Second. Chad, all those in favor say aye. 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 Enjoy the evening. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.